Good day, class. My name is Bashir Ibrahim, and the course uh, for today's class is monetary economics. Why the topic to be treated is money supply. So at the end of today's class, we are expected to know what is money supply, the determinant of money supply, and the derivation of money multiplier, the derivation of money multiplier. Class, so what is money supply? So money supply is just the total currency we have in the economy. The total currency we have in the economy, and we have like three fields that try to explain what the money supply is all about. We have like three scholars, the fields that try to explain what the money supply is all about and the measurement of what the money supply. So one of them is the most common you know, field, which is traditional and Keynesian. Class, traditional and Keynesian, you know, thinking try to explain the money supply to be the currency in the hand of the public plus the demand deposit. The currency in the hand of the public plus the demand deposit. And the demand deposit, according to them, the demand deposit is a combination of savings and current account. Is the current what account is the combination of savings and current account. So according to traditional and Keynesian school of thought, you know, the money supply is the combination of the currency in the hand of the public plus the demand deposit. And demand deposit is divided into two. We have to be, you know, we have it to be savings and the current account. Savings and the current account. And this is called a narrower. It is called what? A narrower. And M1. It is called a narrower and it's equal to what? It's equal to M1. It's equal to M1. So according to them, the money supply is the combination of the currency we have in the hand of the public plus the demand deposit. And the demand deposit is equal to the savings account and the current account. And because they believe that you can easily, this is it's a liquidity in nature, you can easily convert, you know, your savings account into cash, and you can easily convert your current account into, you know, into cash. You can enter the bank and, you know, collect your cash. And that is why they believe that the money supply we have in the economy is, you know, the, the, the currency we have in the hand of the public plus the demand deposit, right? The savings account and what, and current account. And this is liquidity in nature because you can easily convert them to what? To money, right? So the second... Tourist. So the second, you know, school of thought that tried to explain what the money supply is all about is modern quantity theorist. And the arrowhead of this theory is Fredman. The arrowhead of this theory is Fredman. So they tried to explain the money supply, you know, as M1 plus demand deposit. Remember the M1 is the combination of the currency in the hand of the public plus demand deposit. And demand deposit is now divided into two. We have a savings account and current account. But under this Fredman now, they try to add the time deposit you know, to their definition. That this money supply, you know, the total money we have in the economy is a combination of the currency in the hand of the public plus the demand deposit and time deposit. And the demand deposit is the same thing as the savings account and the current account. Why the time deposit is the deposit of the customer with the world, with the commercial bank, right? With the commercial bank. And, you know, they call this to be the currency in the hand the hand of the public plus demand demand deposit plus time deposit. You know, the modern quantity theorist, you know, added by the Fredman, define the money supply to be the currency in the hand of the public 
plus the demand deposit and the time deposit. And the demand deposit here is just with you know the combination of savings account and current account. Why the time deposit is the, the fixed deposit of the customer with the commercial bank or the financial institution, right? Right with the financial institution. So and they call this to be what M2. They call this to be what M2. And this is what Nigeria is currently being practiced now. So to you know to, to, to determine our money supply in, in Nigeria, we use the currency in the hand of the public. You know, the demand deposit, which is equal to the savings account and current account, and the time deposit, which is equal to the fixed deposit of the world of the customer with the commercial bank, right? So we call this to be what? M2, right? So the last one here, class, the last one which is the same thing as M3, sorry, it's the same thing as M3, is associated with this color called Goli and Saw. Goli and Saw. So they only added the, you know, the deposit or the savings of the non-financial institution to the M2, right? Remember, we said the M2 is a combination of the currency in the hand of the public plus the demand deposit and the time deposit, right? So why the Goli and Saw added the non-financial institution savings or deposit to, uh, to the designation, right? That according to them, to determine the money supply, money supply is the combination of the currency in the hand of the public plus the demand deposit and time deposit and the savings of the non-financial institution. Now, let's break it down. Let's let, let, let explain this, right? So if you have to explain this M3 now, we say that the M3 is the currency in the hand of the world, the public, plus demand deposit, which is equal to the savings and current account, and the time deposit, right? Why the time deposit is the fixed deposit, you know, of the customer with the commercial bank. But the savings of the non-financial institution here, yeah, like we have some, you know, some organizations that are into collecting the money, the savings from the customer. They are not a financial institution, right? Like all these mutual benefits, like, you know, all these... Uh, loan association or building society, what they do is just to collect the savings of the customer and they use the same thing to invest and they pay the interest rate to the customer. These are the people that we call a non-financial institution, you know, like all these mutual benefits, you know, some insurance, I also do that. They are not a financial institution and they, they, they don't have a license to operate as a financial institution, but they have the license also to get the deposit or the savings of the customer and they use the same savings to invest and give the interest rate to the world, to the customer. These are the non-financial world institutions. So the Goli and Saw try to explain this M3 with the combination of you know, the currency in the hand of the public and the demand deposit, which is equal to the savings account and current account of the customer, plus the time deposit, which is equal to the fixed deposit of the customer and the deposit or the savings of non-financial what institution. So these are the three scholars that we have that explain what the money supply is all about. So that means, and, and, and we call the second one to be, you know, the brother, why this one is the broadest, right? So in any country, you can either use M1, M2, and M3. And currently in Nigeria now, like I, like I said, we use what? M2. We use M2. And M2 is a combination of the currency. So that means to determine the money supply in this country is a combination of the currency in the hand of the public plus the demand deposit, which is equal to the savings account and current account, and the fixed deposit of the world, of the customer with the world, with the commercial bank or financial institution in this country. So we use this to determine the world, the money supply. We use this to determine the money supply. Now, determinant of money supply. Now, class, how do we determine the money supply? How does the monetary authority, the CBN, you know, for example, in Nigeria, how do they regulate the total money we have in the economy? How do they regulate the total money we have in the world, in the economy? So one of the points here is require reserve ratio.
class required reserve what ratio for you to operate as a financial institution in this country you are expected to keep a particular amount of deposit with the monetary authority and this is what we call what a reserve required ratio i think nigeria should be around 25 billion that for you to operate you know as a bank or financial institution you are expected to have like 25 billion with what with the cbn right so this money there must be the kind of overdraft through all the, the contribution of the shareholder and this needs to be recorded and confirmed you know, by the CBN before they can issue the license to such bank to operate in Nigeria. So now, we can use this reserve, CBN or the monetary authority of the country can use required reserve ratio to regulate the money supply. So let's assume there are too much money in the economy. If there are too much money in the economy and they are trying to use what we call a contraction monetary policy, to mop, you know, or to recoup all this money from the economy, they can decide to increase this. So they can decide to increase this. Now, for example, we have 25 billion to be, you know, the minimum amount of money that the financial institution is expected to have with the CBN. And they wanted to, uh, to use what we call a contraction economy to mop the money, you know, too much money from the economy. They can increase this from 25 what, to 30 billion, right? They can increase from 25 to 30 billion. And this limits the capacity of the financial institution to issue what more money. So another point that we have under the determinant of money supply class, we have now the level of the bank reserve. The level of the bank reserve also determine the total money we have in the economy. Now, yeah, sometimes they call it excess reserve, right? Now, if the total money we have in a financial institution or a particular bank is 100 billion, for example, that you have in your fort, right? So the, this is the total amount they have to do a particular transaction, right? 100 billion to do a transaction. And you know that out of this 100 billion, 25 billion is expected to be fixed with monetary authority, with the CBN. Right? That means such bank of this particular bank have only 75 billion to do what the transaction, right? So the level of the bank reserve is the, 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 the minimum cash available for the, you know, the financial institution to do a business in the economy, to do a business in the economy. And don't be surprised that this is how we know that bank A is better than bank B or bank B is better than bank C as a result of the, word, the bank reserve. So it's just the physical cash left for the commercial bank after fixed the, you know, the required reserve ratio with the monetary authority in the world in the economy. So what is left for them to do the normal transaction is what we call a bank reserve what, ratio. So, so that's what we call a bank reserve, you know, the bank, the level of the bank reserve. So more cash available to the commercial bank, that means they have the capacity to expand the economy they have the capacity to increase the money supply and if the less money is also available within their fault that means they have a less cash to do the work to expand the world the economy now the next point here class is the level Class, the next point here under the determinant of money supply is the desire of the public to hold cash. The desire of the public to hold what? To hold cash or deposit. You know, the desire of the public to hold cash or what deposit. If the desire of the public we have in the economy is to take their cash rather than saving that money into the bank. It is believed that, you know, we have less money in the economy. We have less money in the economy, but if the desire of, you know, or the motive of the citizen is to deposit or to make savings to their financial institution or the bank. So we believe that this creates more supply to the economy.